Are you using Raycast for your bullets? Do you need those bullets to bounce whenever they make impact with an object? In this video, we're gonna look at how to do that using Vector3 Reflect. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality. As I said at the very beginning, we're using Vector3 Reflect in this video to make our Raycast bullets bounce off from walls. Reflection vectors are used for all kinds of things from lighting to reflections and to bouncing bullets or ricocheting bullets. All that Vector3 Reflect does is takes an input vector and a normal and it's going to go and take that input vector and reflect it off from that normal. Unity on their documentation provides us this graphic that explains exactly what I just did with my hands. In this video, what we're gonna do is implement Raycast shooting, much like we did in a previous video where we added bullet tracers to our hitscan guns. We're gonna make some improvements on that video from your comments because some of you mentioned that if you shoot the floor, it still takes a long time for that bullet tracer to get there. And whenever we shoot really far away, it takes the exact same amount of time. In this video, we're gonna implement a gun with shooting that will have a constant speed on that bullet tracer and will optionally turn on the ability to have the bullets bounce off from walls. What fun is it to do that with like realistic bouncing? So at the very end, we're also gonna turn it up to a ridiculous amount of bouncing just to see how many bullets we can have going. I've got to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Every single one of you helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to become a supporter, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier. And speaking of those silver tier supporters, I have Raphael, Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, and Autumn K. I am so grateful for all of your support. Thank you. In this scene, we're using the first person character controller, starter assets from the Unity Asset Store. That's a free asset that Unity provides us to do basic stuff like first person movement. And it's actually pretty good. In the scene, we're just inside a box with some walls. I've got this little gun in front of my player with a gun script attached. At the very tip of the gun, I have this muzzle flash that just plays a little muzzle flash. And you can see if I click play, I can move around with WASD and look around with the mouse. This all comes by default in a prefab, except for the gun and the muzzle flash from that first person character controller asset. I also have some very specific prefabs from the Unity Particle Pack that we use for bullet impact effects and this muzzle flash. That's another free Unity asset that Unity provides that has some pretty good effects in it. Remember, as always, there's a link in the description with this full project on GitHub. You can download it, you can clone it. That way you can play around with it in the exact same environment that I used to make this video. If we open up Visual Studio and the gun script, we're gonna add a bunch of private serialized fields here, a particle system shooting system, that's gonna be that muzzle flash, a transform bullet spawn point, it's going to be where we shoot the raycasts from. That will also be the same as the shooting system, but maybe in your game it wouldn't be. A particle system impact particle system. That'll be the impact particle system to play whenever the raycast hits something. A trail renderer bullet trail. I think it's self-explanatory. A float shoot delay. We'll set it to be 0.1f by default. A float speed that will set to 100 by default. This is going to be how fast that bullet should travel. A layer mask mask. That's going to be the layer mask that we want to hit things with. So we're going to set that to be default later on. A bool bouncing bullets, which will automatically default to false. And a float bounce distance that will set to be 10f by default. This will be the maximum distance that a bullet should be able to bounce before it just dies. We'll also add a float last shoot time. That'll just be the last time that we press the button fire. Next up, let's define a public void shoot. First thing we'll do is check if the last shoot time plus the shoot delay is less than the time dot time. That's just making sure that we don't shoot too fast. And in here, we're again not going to use object pooling. I'm just going to put a little note here that you should use an object pool anytime we're going to do shooting like this because it really improves the performance of your game. The first thing we'll do if we're shooting is play that shooting particle system. Again, that's that muzzle flash. We'll get the direction, which is just going to be transform.forward. We're not going to add in any randomness on this one. I want it to be really accurate just to showcase how to make the bullets bounce. We'll then do trail render trail equals instantiate the bullet trail at the bullet spawn point dot position with the quaternion dot identity rotation. We'll then do if physics dot raycast from the bullet spawn point dot position in the direction that we just had, which was a transform forward. We'll do out raycast hit hit passing float dot max value for how far we should raycast. 
and passing in the layer mask to make sure we're only hitting objects that are on the correct layers that we want to hit. If that returns true, that means we did hit something. So we're going to start a coroutine called spawn trail, and we're going to give that at the trail, the hit.point, the hit.normal, the bounce distance, and true. And we're going to define this in a second, so I'm going to go over what all of those are. But first, we're going to do the other thing that was wrong with my previous video, and that's that if this raycast does not return true, previously we wouldn't spawn a trail, and it was just kind of, you didn't shoot. We still want to shoot something if we don't hit something with a raycast. So what we're going to do is else start coroutine spawn trail, again passing the trail, but for the hit point, we're going to do direction times 100. So we're just going to go 100 units out and then make it disappear. You can play with this number to see what looks good in your game. For the hit normal, it doesn't really matter because we're not going to spawn an impact system. So I'm just going to put vector 3, 0. We're going to again pass in the bounce distance and false for the final parameter. Those don't really matter either. We could pass 0 and false. It's not a big deal. And the last thing we're going to do here is do last shoot time equals time dot time. So we've updated the last time we shot so we can add in that delay so you can't spam click to shoot too quickly. Let's define that spawn trail coroutine. We'll define private I enumerator spawn trail that accepts a trail renderer trail, a vector 3 hit point, a vector 3 hit normal, a float bounce distance, and a bool made impact. So that last boolean that we passed in is whether or not we hit something. We're going to use that to skip spawning that impact particle system at the end for those bullets that missed. First, we'll get the start position with vector 3. Start position equals trail transform dot position. We'll get a direction that this bullet is going with vector 3 direction equals hit point minus trail dot transform dot position dot normalized. We'll then calculate the distance that this bullet should go with float distance equals vector 3 dot distance passing in the trail transform position and the hit point and we'll also define a float starting distance to equal the distance this is a really key difference to what happened from the previous video that i'm kind of building on in this one and used as a basis for this video instead of using time to go and move this trail we're going to use the distance that way we're going to have speed be a constant and not time be a constant. With the speed being constant, that allows us to make sure that our bullet trails will always move at the same speed and not take the same amount of time to get to the start and end point. That makes it where they move really slow when they don't travel very far and really fast when they're traveling really far. So what we're going to do is while distance is greater than zero, trail.transform.position equals vector 3.lerp, passing in the start position, the hit point, and one minus distance over starting distance. We'll then do distance minus equals time dot delta time times speed and yield return null. This way, at the beginning in the vector three lerp, one minus one for the first iteration because distance and starting distance are the same. That means vector three lerp will start from zero and as distance goes down, vector three lerp will get closer to one. That time parameter we're passing in will get closer to one, which will move our trail render from the start position to the hit point based on the speed that we're moving at because again, we're multiplying time.delta time times that speed. Finally, we'll do trail.transform.position equals hit point. We'll check if we've made impact. So if we've hit something, in those cases, we probably A, want to play a particle system. So let's do that. Do instantiate impact particle system, passing in the hit point and the quaternion.look rotation hit normal. That's going to make our impact particle system be facing out from whatever object it hit. And it's going to be spawned right at that hit point. Again, for these, you should be using object pooling, but we're going to keep this video focused on what we're trying to talk about. So I'm not going to muddy the waters here with that. After we spawn that particle system, we're going to check if we want to have bouncing bullets. So if bouncing bullets and the bounce distance is greater than zero, because if we've run out of bounces, we don't want to bounce anymore. In here, we're going to do vector three bounce direction equals vector three dot reflect passing in the direction and the hit normal. Vector three reflect will reflect a vector off from a plane that's defined by this normal. So that second parameter is that normal. So that acts as a plane that we're going to reflect this incoming vector off from. This returns a vector of equal magnitude. That means the same size, it's going the same speed to whatever we passed in for that first argument, but with the direction reflected. Once we know the direction that is reflected, what we can do is check if physics.raycast from that hit point that we were using earlier in the bounce direction, again using out raycast hit hit, passing in the bounce distance and the layer mask, if that hits something, then we know that there's something to go bounce off to. So what we'll do is yield return start coroutine spawn trail. So we're recursively starting coroutines in here using the exact same code we just wrote, 
because we wanted to do the exact same thing, right? We wanted to bounce, go somewhere, and then maybe bounce again. So we'll do yield return, start coroutine, spawn trail, passing in the trail, the hit dot point, the hit dot normal. And for the distance, we're going to do bounce distance minus vector three dot distance passing the hit point and the hit point. That way we have subtracted out how far we just bounced. So the next one knows that it shouldn't go on. That way we don't have infinitely bouncing bullets, right? We want it to get shorter that it can bounce. And we did hit something, so we're going to use true for the final argument. But just like above, if we don't hit something, what we want to do is we still want to spawn that trail and we want it to go off and just end eventually, right? So we're gonna do yield return, start coroutine, spawn trail, passing the trail, the bounce direction times the bounce distance. That way it's gonna go off in the same direction that's bouncing, only as far as it's allowed to go based on our bounce distance. Then we'll use vector three, zero, zero, and false because mostly those don't matter if we pass in the false for the final argument anyway. To round out this coroutine, we're going to do destroy trail.gameObject using the trail.time as the time it should take before it's destroyed. Using yield return start coroutine halts the execution of this coroutine until that other coroutine has ended. That's really powerful because it allows us to recursively call the same coroutine to do exactly what we're doing here, and we will not destroy that trail game object until all other coroutines have finished. That's really cool. We'll just quickly take a look at the player action. It has a private serialized field gun called gun and a public void on shoot that calls gun.shoot. We're going to hook this up with a new input system by adding a new input action called shoot and we'll attach this script to the same object that has the new input system input handling so it will automatically call on shoot for us when we click with the left mouse button. If we hop back to the Unity editor on the gun, we'll start hooking up the references. We'll drag the muzzle flash to the shooting system and to the bullet spawn point. And in the effect examples weapon effects prefabs folder, I'm going to drag this hit effect to the impact particle system. I just generated this by taking the metal impacts prefab out, unpacking it and taking the hit effect and adding it back into the prefabs after making a couple of changes to the hit effects. The effect examples will not be in the GitHub repository. You will have to import that from the asset store yourself. We also have this hot trail prefab that will drag to the bullet trail. We'll also set the layer mask to be default and enable the bouncing bullets. And we already looked at how the inputs are set up. So let's go ahead and just click play. We'll see that I added this moving cube that just moves back and forth to show that this ray casting works on moving objects as well. If I start clicking, you'll see that my bullets start bouncing off the walls because I have bouncing bullets enabled. It's a little bit hard to see them though, so I'm going to split the view where we have the game on the left and the scene view on the right, and I'll start shooting, and on the right side you'll see the bullet bouncing. It looks pretty cool, and bounces all over the place. Each impact spawns that impact particle system, and if I shoot against the wall with some tricky aim, I can hit the blue cube as well, and the bullet will ricochet off the blue cube. And if this isn't cool enough for you, what we can do is increase the bouncing distance from 10 to be something more like 500. And we can see that one bullet takes an extremely long time for it to finally fade out. So if it takes that long for one bullet, we should obviously spam left mouse button as fast as possible to get as many bullets flying around as possible. You'll see though eventually it gets kind of slow. That's what I was talking about earlier that using an object pool for bullets is a must, especially for the impact part systems. You'll see here on my very slow frames here, the update script delayed update calls coroutine delayed calls is taking a very long time and almost all of that time comes from instantiating new objects. And there we have it. From start to finish, implementing a gun that shoots raycast bullets that can ricochet off from walls for however long you want them to ricochet. Of course, before you take this to production, you need to make sure that you implement object pooling for these impact particle systems and those bullet trails. So that way you don't have these huge performance problems like we were seeing here. I hope this practical example of how to use Vector3 Reflect helped deepen your understanding of how it works. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.